Hi, my name is Max, and this video is about invoice and statement document formats that are generated in the recurring billing process of Software One Marketplace platform. For those of you who don't know, our platform is a digital business network that connects uh, our vendors uh, with uh, the clients and partners of Software One. And of course, uh, this recurring billing process is essentially the uh, cornerstone of um, uh, the whole uh, world of uh, recurring billing subscriptions. And uh, if we were to simplify uh, uh, and look at this process at the high level, it's all about us connecting with our vendors that uh, periodically following their own schedule issue, um, they're billing data to us. And we use this, that data uh, to generate uh, two distinct types of documents, the invoice document, which is a legal document that was sent to our clients, uh, and the statement document uh, that we generate uh, for each invoice that uh, we send to our clients. Technically speaking, we even generate statement before we generate the invoice. So invoice is an aggregation of the data, and uh, those documents correspond one to one. Um, and uh, could be used for reconciliation uh, purposes to understand uh, details of their charges. Now, if we look at this whole process in its entirety, of course, it's a very complex process because uh, billing depends on all the previous layers. And to understand this process in details, you will probably need to understand all the objects, uh, business objects in this diagram. We will not get uh, to that level of details. Uh, what we need to understand at the high level that uh, the cornerstone of this whole process is uh, the object of an agreement uh, that is managed by our platform uh, and that essentially connects the buyer of ourselves with uh, the uh, seller of Software One. In that object, uh, all the orders and subscriptions are being placed. And this is where the split billing, if it's uh, enabled, uh, this is where it's configured uh, that allows our clients to split uh, the charges for a given agreement uh, between different legal entities of, their, of themselves. Then on the uh, other side of our platform, uh, all those orders are uh, processed typically by automated extension uh, that uh, works with our platform in the scope of a given product. And then once those subscriptions are established in the platform, um, our vendors uh, submit uh, billing data consisting of those detailed charges uh, that are sometimes uh, actually quite uh, numerous and you will have uh, hundreds and even thousands of charges for a given agreement that ultimately our clients will uh, receive in the form of the statement, which is detailed breakdown document and an invoice, which is the consolidated document um, that uh, we generate uh, based on, uh, on the statement uh, with consolidated charges in the scope of a given item. So we don't need to get into the details of this entire diagram. Uh, we probably can limit this uh, to just the set of most important objects. And the things that we need to know here uh, are the following. That uh, statement is the object that contains detailed uh, breakdown of charges from the vendor that you can use to reconcile on the very detailed level. And invoice uh, is a consolidated document that is generated based on the statement, but consolidated uh, at the level of items. And uh, then it's also important to note that uh, orders, while orders of course exist in the scope of the agreement, there is no direct relationship uh, between orders and invoices. You can have uh, no orders in the given billing period and still receive the invoice for your subscription. You didn't modify anything. Uh, you could receive uh, multiple orders in the scope of the same billing period because let's say you were placing an order for 10 seats, then adding extra seats, then removing seats. Uh, so you can have a lot of orders and still you will receive just one invoice typically from the vendor at the end of the billing cycle. And you could have multiple subscriptions in the scope of the same agreement. Again, depending on the vendor, you could have one or you could have multiple. So those are the key concepts that you need to remember. And of course, products are created in the scope of a given product uh, and uh, for, a for, for a given uh, buyer and licensee. So with that uh, understood at the high level, let's take a look at those documents one by one. And uh, of course, um, the structure of those documents reflects the actual logical structure of our platform. So uh, you will see uh, some information uh, 
at the header level of those documents like agreement, product, and buyer. They don't change across the invoice. And then, uh, and statement as well. So they are constant for the header. And then you will have the list of subscriptions, uh, as many subscriptions as you have in that agreement, because again, invoices issued per agreement. And for every subscription, you will see a list of items. Um, those items are consolidated uh, charges for those items in the scope of a given uh, subscription. So you might uh, sometimes have uh, hundreds or even thousands of charges that will consolidate into one item uh, in the scope of a given subscription. Um, then, of course, you could have charges for the same item in the scope of a different subscription. So this is the logical structure. And with this, let's take a look at how we uh, implement that in uh, Software One documents. So the invoice document that you are looking at right now is essentially a PDF document that we generate electronically and share with our clients. Um, of course, we removed some legal headers and footers from it here for the sake of simplicity. It just shows the general structure. And when you look at the header of the document, you, this is where you will see the actual uh, information that allows you to associate this invoice with a given agreement. So first of all, uh, the PO number, the uh, field that you will see on the very top is essentially the identifier that you can associate with uh, a given agreement in our platform. So when you go to the agreement in the platform and you will go to the list of those additional identifiers, this is where you will see this uh, field and you will typically want to associate it with blanket PO or recurring PO, uh, depending on what procurement system you are using, you might have a different, identif different name for it. Uh, but uh, by clicking edit uh, at that document, at the agreement, you can customize that field. You can see the agreement identifier itself uh, at the field called external document number of the invoice. And this is the field that you will see everywhere across our platform, basically that uniquely uh, identifies this agreement uh, in our platform. And in the field, your reference, you will find the statement identifier. Statement identifier is essentially could be used uh, to navigate to the agreement details, to the attachment section, and, and to find that document uh, that corresponds to that invoice. And you can use the identifier of that uh, statement to find the document you need. So that's the header, uh, hopefully pretty straightforward and simple. And uh, you can quickly go from that document to our portal and see the details. Then when you go to the details of the uh, invoice, you will see the portal reference at the very top. This is how you can even identify uh, invoices that are issued by our platform in this recurring billing process, followed by the section with key identifiers, account identifier, agreement identifier, and name. This is where you will also find the product identifier and name and uh, license, licensee identifier and name, the entity that connects uh, to this agreement. And then you will see uh, a section per subscription in the scope of the agreement. In the example that I'm using, we only have three subscriptions. You can have less or more, uh, but uh, in this example, we only had three. So you will have uh, uh, equal sections for each subscription. And each of those will contain subscription identifier uh, and uh, client identifier for corresponding for this subscription. Uh, this is the identifier that you can find in our platform if you go to the details of the subscription. And this is where you will find this uh, additional identifier. Uh, you can use it uh, to assign the subscription to a given cost center, for example, or some other way uh, that you need for, for the reconciliation purposes in your procurement systems. And uh, you can assign that. You will get this on every invoice. And then for, for each item in the scope of the subscription, and uh, in my example, I only have one, uh, you will see the name of the item. Uh, you will see the uh, identifier of the item. And uh, for, you will see the total charges, consolidation of all charges associated, associated with this item uh, from the statement document. So uh, you will also see the item quantity at the moment of invoice generation. In the world of subscription, this uh, quantity is uh, something that uh, is not uh, constant, uh, as you probably know, because in the same billing period, you are modifying the quantity. You are adding seats, removing seats, and then receiving 
the uh, consolidated invoice. So this is the quantity that uh, was effective at the moment of this document generation. And some of your charges might be associated with different quantities. You need to look at the statement document. And it's also important that since we are consolidating the charges, so this line represents the consolidated charge for the item, uh, the quantity could not be related to any given charge. You need to go to the given to the statement document and for the reconciliation purposes and see uh, which charges uh, were associated uh, with what quantity. Um, so uh, hopefully pretty straightforward here. If you have split billing enabled for your agreement and you are receiving this invoice as a result of split billing configuration that your uh, buyer uh, is participating in the split, then you will also see the allocation of uh, this uh, specific item uh, to your uh, legal entity. And uh, if you have split billing enabled for only just only one entity, for whatever reason, you will see that is 100% allocation. So that's pretty much the format of the invoice. Hope it makes sense, it's pretty straightforward. And then for every invoice, we would issue the statement document. Like I said, even before the invoice is generated, we have those statement documents. And uh, the statement document is an Excel file, unlike PDF, so it allows us to provide much more details there. You can see that uh, this Excel document consists of multiple tabs. At the moment of recording this video, it's three tabs. Maybe we add more in the future. But at the very minimum, you will see the summary tab, the charges tab, and the orders tab. Uh, the summary tab uh, contains all this basic information that you see on your screen, like uh, agreement name and identifier and uh, buyer and client and uh, product and all those basic fields. Also, uh, it shows uh, the list of orders. So if you click it here, you will actually jump to the tab with orders. Orders uh, uh, do not always correspond to the given billing period. So you need to be very cautious with that. Uh, for example, you could receive the invoice for the previous months. And you were not placing any orders during previous months, but you have just subscription running. Uh, so that uh, orders tab will be empty, or you could have multiple orders uh, during that period, or you could have some orders that do not uh, actually, uh, did not modify anything, anything in this given billing period, like in terms of returns. So uh, sometimes you need to go to the portal to see the full list of orders from previous, previous period. But for your convenience, we'll attach them here to this document. Then the second tab, the charges tab, contains this detailed breakdown of all the charges that uh, you receive in the scope of the subscription. And uh, this is where you will receive uh, uh, all the detailed information, sometimes hundreds or thousands of charges. Um, so the structure of this tab is uh, the following. You will receive uh, the um, uh, charge ID. Uh, the first column represents this uh, unique identifier of a given charge. You will see the subscription identifier and subscription name uh, that this charge is uh, linked with. You will see the uh, client identifier that you have attached to this given uh, subscription that allows you to allocate those uh, to call centers, for example. Um, you will see the vendor identifier for this subscription. And then you will see item identifier and name in our platform that this charge is linked with. Then you will see the uh, invoice uh, item identifier, so ERP identifier of software one and vendor identifier, if you need that for, for the reconciliation purposes. The charge period uh, that is uh, associated with this charge uh, in the vendor systems. Then if split billing is enabled, you will see the split billing allocation, which is the essentially the percentage and effective license count that was calculated for this given charge. Uh, you will see the uh, quantity and sales price uh, of uh, this charge. Uh, note that uh, those are depending on the vendor sometimes are prorated. Uh, so we need to be careful, uh, not always to assume that this is the effective price of the item in the price list of a vendor. And then the charge total, which also will include the allocation of split billing if again, it's uh, configured for your uh, agreement. So pretty straightforward structure, hopefully, and uh, you will be able to understand that quite easily. And then in the order tab, like I said, you will see the list of orders uh, from the previous months, uh, because we 
not we're not always able to associate uh, orders with a given billing period in most cases it will work but uh, in some cases when you have uh, orders that are like returning something modifying the period outside of the billing cycle uh, you might need to go to the portal and we provide uh, the link to the portal right away and uh, filter orders uh, that are outside of the billing period to understand uh, where this order uh, that modified something came from uh, that's pretty much it. Hopefully now you understand the structure uh, that, uh, again, everything uh, in the world of recurring billing revolves around the agreement that is created for given buyer and licensee for, in the scope of the product. Uh, then uh, in the scope of this agreement, orders are being placed and subscription are maintained. And then we receive those charges from the vendor and uh, we generate a statement document. And then we issue invoice as a consolidation of those charges for given item in the subscription. That's uh, pretty much the structure. Now, frequently asked questions that we receive quite often are the following. Number one, so how do I attach my purchase order identifier to the invoice? And hopefully from my explanation, you now understand that uh, there is no one-to-one -one relationship between orders and invoices in the world of subscriptions. Because if you take this example, for example, you can place an order for 50 seats. Uh, and then you modify uh, and add extra seats in the same billing period, and then you cancel uh, a few days later, and all of that happens in the same billing period, and then you receive uh, one invoice uh, uh, at the end of this billing period, like for all of those orders. Or you could have none of those, and you just have subscription running, and you receive the invoice uh, as well without any orders. So if you want to receive uh, identifiers uh, for your uh, uh, agreements uh, in the scope of uh, subscriptions recurring billing, please assign additional identifiers to either agreements or subscriptions uh, as you prefer or the way your, your uh, procurement system requires. So client identifiers, like I said, could be assigned to the agreement and could be assigned to the subscription, but uh, they could also be assigned to the order but uh, there is no trivial way of correlating order identifiers upon the receiving of the invoice. Next question is, uh, so why all of the subscription invoices lines marked with quantity one? So this is uh, essentially because uh, the charges that you see on your invoice are consolidated charges, because often we receive hundreds and thousands of charges for a given vendor. And if we were to include all of them to the PDF, uh, that PDF would be physically impossible to transfer. It will be a very huge document. Uh, so we have to consider them at the level of items. And if you want to see the detailed breakdown of those charges, please refer to the statement uh, document, statement Excel file. Th this is why uh, between the statement and the invoice document, there is a consolidation process. So you can you only see the consolidated charges. And so effectively, when you are looking at the line of the invoice, uh, for each of the items, you will see the total charge amount, and uh, this uh, quantity one represents that this is one charge, uh, that like one consolidated charge that we are sending. Uh, uh, and uh, effectively, you can also see the subscription item quantity at the moment of invoice generation. Uh, and uh, that number will always be one. You can as well ignore it. Um, uh, at the moment of uh, recording this video, we do not have a technical ability to generate, uh, to exclude it from the from the PDF document. If we were able to, we would just remove that number. So please ignore that. Uh, question number three is, can I customize the invoice or statement document format? So at the moment of uh, recording this video, our platform supports only one format for each of those documents. Uh, we may uh, expand that in the future. Uh, and make that configurable at the level of uh, your uh, account. Uh, so if you have suggestions or ideas uh, for alternative formats of how you would want to see that data uh, so that it will make your reconciliation work easier, please contact your account manager or our technical support team and we'll be happy to hear your feedback. Um, that's all I had for today. There are multiple ways to learn more. Uh, well, first of all, it's our public documentation and uh, it's likely that you are watching this video is uh, attached to the documentation to start with, uh, the billing uh, section of our documentation. Um, if not, then you will find the link to that documentation article below uh, in the description of this video. So please refer to that. It's a good uh, source of a lot of information. 
uh, we uh, uh, maintain our YouTube channel with uh, trainings and uh, uh, tutorials associated with the platform. So if you like this video, please uh, subscribe and like our videos because it uh, it lets us know that uh, you like them and uh, we would record more of those. So thank you very much, guys. Again, please hit like and subscribe if uh, this video was helpful. Um, thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Bye.